Well, one, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, we have known for a long time that we have something very special here with our Lady Vol basketball program. As we began this process to find a new women's basketball coach, many of the coaches that we were talking to about the job referred to the Lady Vol basketball program with reverence. Lady Vol basketball is the mecca, the genesis, and the mother of modern women's basketball in our country. It was very clear at the beginning that we had to find a person that truly understood the foundations that Pat Summit and our past Lady Vol coaches and players had laid here at Tennessee. We have an amazing brand that resonates across the country. We needed to find a person to support and grow our young ladies academically, socially, and athletically to, in essence, be a second parent. Kelly Jolly Harper cares. She's an excellent communicator and will grow our young ladies. We needed to find a person that will recruit, as we have in the past, at the highest level and develop our young ladies into a real team, not just a group of athletes. Kelly demands respect and cares and wants, each other, wants people to care for each other. Kelly communicated in her interview a clear pan, plan and a passion and a vision. It was clear that Kelly does not view this as just a job. It will be a lifestyle for her and her family as it is ingrained in her blood and in her gut. Her teams reflect, have reflected accountability, effort, fundamentals, intensity, and toughness, as well as skill and execution. We all recognize that talent and effort and greatness are parallel roads, and it's hard to have one without the other. Under Coach Harper's leadership, the Lady Vols will be what the world has become to expect and admire from the Lady Vols. It is my pleasure to introduce our Lady Vol basketball coach. Welcome home, Kelly Harper. Well, thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank Coach Fulmer, and um, I want to thank him for this opportunity to be here and to be your coach. I do realize when I walked up here, I can look right out this door and see a statue over there. That's, that moment was not lost on me. Thanks also goes out to Angie and all the other administrators here at the University of Tennessee. There are some great top-notch people here that I look forward to working with. I also want to thank my family for being here. Um, my husband, John, my mom, my brothers, Brent Ross, Erica, Patsy, Kara, Reagan, um, and our children, Jackson and Kylie. Jackson, who obviously already has the Lady Vols as his sisters. I also want to thank uh, my former coaches for being here and former roommates for being here. Um, and all former Lady Vols for being here. There are also some people that I wish could be here today, some close friends. Um, and of course my dad. And I know he's smiling down and this is a proud moment for him as well. I also hope that Pat Summit is smiling down today. I think about her often and I know that's going to become more frequently 
here for a while, and it's important to say, I'm not here to try to be Pat Summit. I'm here to be Kelly, who learned from Pat Summit, and hopefully you'll see that. In addition, I want to be very respectful to Holly Warlick and her staff. I played for Holly, and I love Holly and her passion for this university. Everyone knows that the University of Tennessee Lady Vols basketball program is great and historic, but not everyone knows what it's like to be in it, what it's like to put that jersey on and play for something so much bigger than self. So I do understand the gravity of this position and I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I'm ready to take on this journey. The Lady Vols program has many responsibilities to this university, to this community, to this state, and to be quite honest with you, to all of women's basketball. We also have a responsibility to our alumni. I want our alums to be proud of who we are. I want them to be involved and continue to support this team. We're going to do that. We're going to do that by being fun, a fun team to watch and a fun team to pull for. And you do that by being tough, gritty, and high energy. We're going to play quick. We're going to play aggressively. And we're going to compete. And we're going to be honored to wear the Tennessee jersey. I am so, so excited to be home. When you give everything you have to a program and you have this opportunity, it's indescribable and extremely special. I'm ready to get to work. Thank you, guys. Hi, Kelly. I'm Patrick Murray from Channel 10. Uh, Coach Fulmer mentioned, you know, he can tell that this is more than a job to you. This is going to be a lifestyle. I mean, obviously, you come from a basketball family. Your husband's a coach, too. Just how ingrained in your life is the game of basketball in this program? Oh. Well, for, for me, the, um, the lines are blurred between family and basketball. Um, it, my son's sitting with the players, um, and I think it's um, – you know, you feel like you just give everything you have to your program. You feel like the players are your family. And um, to be back here, you know, I'm pretty competitive. Um, I want to win, but there's no other place that I want to do it more than here. Kelly, two questions for you. One, I saw a photo of you walking past the trophy case earlier today. Uh, I was just wondering what your emotions were, what you were thinking in that moment. And then two, um, what did you learn from your experience at NC State and replacing Kay Yao that, that you can apply to this job? Well, I think, first of all, my emotions today, have, well, they've been all over the map, to be quite honest with you. I know we've got a lot of, lot of work to do, and that's where I'm trying to keep my focus. Um, but... Um, it's a little surreal when you walk by the national championship trophies, and um, it's pretty special when you get to point your picture out to your children. So, I, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a fun day, really. It's been a fun day to relive some memories and get excited about what's about to happen. Um, yeah, you know, I think anywhere you go, any experience that you have, both positive and negative, I think you learn from that. And I was definitely able to do that. You know, going over to NC State after Coach Yao, um, it was just a really interesting situation. And uh, obviously it had its challenges. And I think I've grown as a, as a coach. You know, I've learned a lot and um, really been able to apply a lot of those lessons to my coaching uh, moving forward. But you do that in any situation. You know, I think um, when I was hired as a head coach at Western Carolina, I was the youngest coach in the country. A lot has changed about me since then. Steve McGargy, Associated Press. You kind of touched on how you're replacing Coach Yao at NC State. How is that kind of similar or different to what you're doing now, kind of the second person replacing Pat Summit? And also, 
you said you kind of grown since then. What are the specific ways you think in which you've grown the most as a coach since that challenge? Yeah, um, I think I think things are quite different to be quite honest with you. When when I took over at NC State, um, the coach had passed away during that season. Their current coach. It, it was very different. Um, and then in terms of, of how I've grown, I, you know, I've grown as a, a communicator. I've, I've grown as a, uh, I want to say even administrator, you know, knowing how to manage our staff and manage players and understand what they need. It's not always about X's and O's. And I think I've learned that a lot throughout my career. Kelly, Marshall Hughes, WATE. Uh, when you began your coaching career right out of Tennessee, did you – it was it a goal of yours to, to ever come back to Rocky Top, or was that was this somewhere that you said, "Hey, I'll probably be one day again"? You know, Pat used to uh, kid me that she used to say, "You know, you'll probably come back and coach at Tennessee one day," and um, I I really brushed that off because in my mind that was Pat Summit's job, and that was going to be Pat Summit's job forever, and um, <clears throat> you just don't think about her not being there. So it's been obviously. Um, it's been a few years and we've had to get used to that. It's not been easy. Um, but, you know, when, um, when this opportunity became available, this is my dream job. Uh, Kelly, you mentioned you're not here to be Pat. You have to be yourself, but, but you did learn from her. What, what are some of those things that you learned from her that you've taken with you throughout your career and that you can bring here as well? Well, you, you learn so much from her. Um, if you're not learning from her, you weren't trying. And I think the things that I always have taken away on the court, I always try on the court and off the court. On the court, she was always so poised as a coach. Um, so whatever she was selling us, we were believing it. And she would come to the huddle. She would come to the huddle. If it was a tight game, I do realize that we were in not a lot of tight games. but. If she came to the, and, and you know, it was a tight game, she could immediately pass on that poise to her team. And we could walk out on the court with a lot of confidence. I've tried to have that for our team, be able to give that to our team in those situations. Um, I thought she did an unbelievable job of utilizing her assistant coaches. Uh, I was able to see that in uh, my sophomore season when I set out part of the year due to an ACL tear. Um, and I got to see how she relied on them, and that was, uh, that was very insightful for me. And she ran a classy program. She did it first class. She treated people the right way. She did it the right way, and that's something that I've always tried to mimic as well. Just wasn't sure if you knew that what the makeup of your staff was going to be like and if it's going to include your husband first. And also, have you had any direct contact with the incoming recruits, and have they kind of all said, they're on board or, is, or have any of them decided to keep their options open? Okay, absolutely. Um, so addressing the staff, we're working on it right now. So uh, once we kind of get that finalized, we'll, we'll make sure to get that out there. So that's kind of a work in progress. Uh, in terms of the recruits had great conversations with their family, great conversations with them, and they are all on board and feel great about being Lady Vols. Coach Vince Ferrar, 99.1, the sports animal here in Knoxville. Uh, what do you know about your existing roster? I know you'll learn more about them as you go along. And uh, Vina Westbrook is in the transfer portal. Have you had a chance to reach out to her yet? Um, so we've met the team briefly and uh, just was able basically just to make some introductions, relieve some anxiety, let them actually see and hear from their coach directly. But um, in terms of the makeup of the team, I've been able to watch – obviously some video of them and I'm really excited about getting my hands on them because I think there's a lot of talent there and and I think what they bring will fit uh, my style you know we say we want to be aggressive we want to want to get up and down the floor I think they can do that and I think they're going to have a lot of fun with it and no I have not been able to speak with Avina one-on-one -on -one yet Kelly, when you talked about the recruits, did you mean the, uh, did you also get a chance to speak to the uh, young lady from Australia that, that's coming here? Um, I'm not sure I can, I'm not sure I can, yeah, I'm not sure I can answer that. Uh, 
Kelly, Gene Henley, Chattanooga Times Free Press. Um, you know, you've kind of had a, such a you know, such a crazy day. Is there a moment where you've kind of had a chance to reflect and realize I am the women's basketball coach at the University of Tennessee? It's a big statement, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, I'll tell you, the, there there have been many moments today that it would be easy to be, oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. But the, the moment for me was when they just brought my daughter back there in a Tennessee outfit with a Tennessee logo on it. And Jackson comes in with a Power T shirt on. That was it for me. That was the moment. First, where do you think Tennessee is as a program right now compared to the Connecticut's, the Baylor's, and so forth? And also, you obviously played for Holly. Have you spoken with her at all in the last 48 hours? Was there any advice she gave you? Uh, so uh, I've reached out to Holly. We've played a little phone tag, so we're going we're gonna to connect soon. So that has not happened yet, but it will. Um, in terms of where the program is right now, I think the biggest thing is the consistency. I think some of the programs that you mentioned um, are consistently contenders to be in the Final Four and win national championships, and I think we've got to get there. I think we can do that, and I, I'm, I'm excited and very confident in our ability to get this group there. Uh, Mike Wilson, Knoxville News Sentinel. You mentioned that you talked to all the signees. How quickly of a priority is that when you do become the head coach of a new program? And do you know much about any of them at this point? Well, I've done a little bit of homework on them. So I've seen, seen a couple of them play live in person. And um, it, is, it is a priority. To me, the priorities are your current players. That's your first priority. Um, and then your signees, your staff, and your recruits. Uh, and, and I think you've got to get, get those um, – boxes checked off quickly. I wanted to make sure we reached out to, to those young ladies that they got to ask any questions and, and I'll actually be going out to visit them one on one. I think that's really important. I have this time with our players, our current players, to talk to them and spend time with them. I think the signees need to feel that same comfort level. Good. <laughs> you talked in your opening statement about the importance of the Tennessee Lady Vols brand and all that, but just how critical was it for a candidate to have some sort of ties to this program? Was it essential? It, it was essential, I, I think. And, and Angie and, and Donna and Tara, all the girls, ladies here that have been around, they, that was immediately told to me. You know, I was a bit in the mindset, you know, we need to find the best coach, you know, male, female, lady ball, not, you know, you know, just whoever's going to be the best at this moment. I'm telling you, it became very clear to me as the, as the interview process has started that we had our choice in the country of coaches to talk to. And um, as we went through a grinding process and our staff did a grinding search, uh, it became clear that a Lady Vol would be really great. And then, you know, Kelly knocked it out of the park. And, and we, had, we had lots of good interviews with people. There was there's a lot of people interested in this job. Philip, you mentioned the, the interest in this job. Uh, it just, does it concern you at all that Kelly's mark in, at a Power Five level, and, and or how much more do you weigh that against what she did at, at Missouri State this year? Well, I mean, she went to the tournament with, at every place that she coached. Uh, you can tell her intensity and her passion for her players and her her program that whatever she's representing. And when she talked about Tennessee, she talked about her teammates and Pat and. There was a reverence there that was, you know, really, really special. Um, you know, I just, we felt like that was the right way to go, and, and uh, I'm excited to see her get, get to work. 
Coach, Rick Russo here from WVLT. And, you know, Kelly talked about how surreal this is. How surreal is it for you? Because she was winning national championships back in the day when you were winning a national championship here at UT. And how, would, how do you think Pat would, would uh, feel about this day as well? I think she'd be thrilled with this choice. And she had a number of Lady Vols out there that would, uh, could just have easily been picked. But, uh, you know, Pat c carried herself a certain way and with class and dignity and, and uh, the Lady Vols that we interviewed and really all the people that we interviewed, you know, that's, that's the, she's the standard barrier, you know, and they, they were much like her. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put too much pressure on Kelly by th even thinking, you know, I got to be Pat Summit. That's... You know, the game has changed a lot uh, since then. You know, there's a lot more schools in the country that are dedicated to, you know, having great basketball schools, uh, women's basketball programs. There's, um, you know, there used to be six or seven teams, and, and, and not to take anything away from Pat or anybody else, but now there's six or seven teams in this league that try to beat your brains out. You know, and uh, so it's it's a different time, and the game has changed, and faster, and open, and and Holly uh, uh, Kelly gets all of that, all of that. Philip, uh, I know you did your your homework and background, so you knew her accomplishments. But what in the interview process that she laid out and spoke about impressed you? It wasn't, it wasn't one or two things. It was kind of, the, kind of the, from start to finish. You could tell she was you know, bright and articulate and, and, and cared very much about where she was coaching, which that loyalty you know, was important. You know, her, her current players there, and, but she knew, she, I mean, like I said, it, she, has, she has bled for the Lady Vols. You know, and she's been part of some of its most historic time in its history with three national championships. And, you know, she knows what it feels like to be behind with a possession or two to go and find a way to win or to live up to expectations, you know, for that matter. So it's been, it was a, it was a very, it was a two and a half hour, three hour time spent together that was extremely positive. Just who were some of the people you consulted with in terms of making this decision, not play, people you interviewed, but people who were involved in the decision-making process? And was it ultimately a group decision or was it ultimately your call? Well, I mean, ultimately it'd be, it'd be my call, my responsibility, but you know, all of, all of the people I mentioned earlier and in, in our department you know, were part of it. Angie Keck was a big part of it. Um, you know, we had a number of people involved, and then I talked to people really all over the country. We talked to people all over the country about people that we were looking at uh, and people that uh, that actually did interview. So. Joan, Joan, I should mention Joan was helpful. Joan Cronin was very helpful in the process as well. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs>